Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Uh, okay. Sarah, it's are you gaslighting line. Drew over here? What's that? Are you giving him, like you're trying to screw with him? Screw with who? <laughs> All right. Now she's doing it to me. No, I know what you're talking about. What? One of the ears wasn't working the lovely way. I know. And so you went and Some shook the jack. And Sarah's looking at you like, what? Yeah. what My ears what are, are fine. My f- ears are fine. I'll see. Did it look like I was going like this? Yeah, we're used to Yeah, you were you were working. tapping your your ear like uh, you went like this. We saw you do that. So you were like my. It doesn't work. That's what we interpreted. What? Oh, uh, that Actually, wasn't was, the signal I was trying she to. Was picking some earwax out you're of just your ear. <laughs> scratching your headphones. I brought an ear candle. I was going to use. Oh, that candling! So I got to get into that. Well, hold on a second. First, uh, let, let's just... Oh, I hate this dump so badly. I just hate this place. Even when something's not actually wrong, we assume there must be a malfunction in the equipment, and right. it screws us all up. That's right. Phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, and my dear, 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 dear friend, Sarah Silverman, is in here tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Sarah, <laughs> you, uh, you know, is uh, one of the uh, legitimate... Funny women of comedy. Uh, is, yeah? Uh, oh! Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, well, she's in Crank Yankers, so she's got to be funny. Measure legitimate. No, not funny. She legitimate. Pl- she plays, yes. <laughs> she plays uh, the uh, delightful Hadassah Guberman and uh, doing a lot more calls with us uh, this year. You, uh, she did uh, a year in Saturday Night Live, Greg the Bunny, and uh, now has a, a one-woman show called Jesus is Magic, and that's opening at the Cannon Theater, and it starts uh, November 6th through uh, the 16th. And uh, Cannon Theater, for those of you who haven't been there out in uh, the Los Angeles area, it's in Beverly Hills. It's on Cannon Drive, I guess, right uh, between, like, Wilshire and Beverly. Beautiful sure, theater. Sure. Beautiful. Isn't Beautiful. That, isn't that Canyon? Isn't that pronounced that oh. out there? Beverly Hills? That's what it I was just asking. It is pronounced Canyon, okay. but they call it Cannon. I see. Okay. Got it. It has an N. N- y- yeah, it has it has the, the senior squiggle <laughs> over over the end, and it should be pronounced Canyon, but everyone always called it Canon, and that's what they still do. And uh, Anderson is uh, fixing Sarah's uh, mic. So, what can we expect to see? And I've heard rave reviews about this show, by the way. And I normally don't like uh, one-person shows. You went to see the vagina monologues, though. Yeah. So yeah. how can you say? Oh. That turd. I saw half of that on TV, and I just I wanted to vomit on my own vagina. Really? <laughs> yes. I wanted to vomit into my own vagina and create this sort of never-ending cycle. Of vomit and re- right. re-vomiting. Uh, every right. time I look at my vagina, I want to punch somebody. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that thing sucked. But this isn't that. This is making fun of God and Hitler and that kind of stuff, right? Oh, stuff you like, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> it's good irreverent stuff. This is the kind of stuff that gets you sent to hell, right? I hope so. Yeah. It's, a, you know, I guess I talk about, um, you know, I, I do a lot of racial stuff. I talk about September yeah. 11th. I, yeah. talk, I joke around about the Holocaust, <laughs> AIDS, <laughs> and then there's some fart stuff there, Woo! too. For them. God. That's yeah. it. That's she it. hit the trilogy. That's it. She hit the fart. racial stuff, the Holocaust, and the fart that's humor. It. And rape. Oh, the quadrilogy. Well, that's just a little oh. dessert for you. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think rape is a good thing. Oh, that was. If you take contact. the e off of rape, you'll see that it gets a bad rap. I don't say that on my <laughs> show. I don't know. I said that. Yeah. It sounds like a good slogan. This is, uh, by the way, going to be going on for ten short days, sold out in uh, New York and uh, other parts of the country, even bigger than New York. Oh yes. Is this, is this stuff you've sort of honed over a period of time and pulled yeah. together into it? Yeah. Yep. Over the last uh, 14 days, she's mm-hmm. honed this. Now, how long have you been working on this app? Um, I don't know, a couple of years. And uh, is it wh- what's the running time of it? Because I'm coming uh, on, um, I don't know when. But, you know, I want to enjoy myself. But Do you really not go to know work, when or you know? do you know when and you don't want, like, fans out there to come? Oh, yeah. Come. And they, they yeah. fall a like, throng yeah. around <laughs> Mr. Corolla. Yeah. yeah. I have so many fans. You know, somebody said to me uh, last night, does it bother you that uh, whenever there's somebody here to uh, catch a guest of the show that uh, you just walk right past them and they don't even talk to you and then they're waiting for the guest? 
You know what I'm saying? Every night it's, outside. It's almost hard to, yes, I think what you're saying, but hard. nothing we've noticed. That couldn't yeah, but, be true. No, if there's a group yes. of people waiting out front to greet a guest, whether it be a beautiful woman or a rock star or whoever, well, we don't really get any rock stars, but quasi-rock stars on this show, True, you and I just walk past the crowd unmolested, yes? Absolutely. Nobody stops us with our autograph even, or anything. No, we don't even think about it. Right. Never okay. occurred to this moment that somebody might. Okay, yeah. so we've established we have no fans, so it doesn't really matter what day I announce I'm coming on. But uh, <laughs> I, may, I may come all ten, all ten days. All ten days, I'm guessing. I'm saying ten days. And uh, you do some two-show days, like on uh, Saturday or Sunday or something There's two like that. shows on Saturday. All right. Then Wednesday I'll... through Saturday, two shows Saturday. All right, then I'm, then I'm coming on those days. And a show mm -hmm. runs, uh, what, like hour 15? It's just under an hour, I would say. It, it won't hit an hour. Good. It's maybe an hour at the most. Good, because uh, brevity is the soul of wit, as I've always said. All right, Drew? Mm, yeah. You ready to take some calls, Sarah? Calls, yes? Y yes, I feel... Like you're ready to take some calls? Yeah. <laughs> John? Yeah. You're 16? Yep. What's up? Um, have you seen the movie 40 Days and 40 Nights? No. Oh, well, it's about a guy who can't get off for like 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. That's and a film. Yeah, yeah. You mean the one that came out like a year and a half ago with that good-looking guy in it? Yeah. The one that all the chicks like for some reason. Yeah. Hearten it. Yeah. Josh, right? Yep. Yeah. How dare they? Josh. Yeah, they want to. They want to. They want to give him an orgasm because he announces he doesn't want to have one. Yeah, just I don't like real life, that. just it's like not, high school. It's not happening like that for me. But oh, so friend, he, you were trying to act this out. You were going to announce to everyone that uh, you'll be damned if you're going to have an orgasm, and <laughs> sure enough, people sort of didn't care. Yeah, exactly. Sure enough. Yeah. Right. Well, hey, you know what? I, ironically, you don't care. I don't care either. <laughs> Hey. Nice one. There you go. Now nobody cares. Whatever. James? Yeah. You're 21. Yes, sir. What is up? Well, nothing much. Uh, I, like I told the screener, he said that uh, I was letting him know when I was uh, 16, I, I we were partying with uh, just like a barbecue out by the, by the river. It's like a little place that we used to go when we were, you know, just growing up. We used to ride it. This guy sounds like a young Brando, doesn't he? He Brando doing Don Corleone, though. <laughs> Not Brando as himself. Yeah, a, James. A young Don Corleone. A lot, a lot of people say that. Yeah. A lot of oh, people say that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, seriously, I have, like, a nasal problem. I, I hear that. You need um, to have some polyps or something. What do you got? Uh, you know what? I just, I thought I had a head cold my whole life, so. Is it deviated septum or polyps? Uh, what do you got? That's, that's all it is. You know, I just, uh. Well, why don't you get that repaired? But, I, I, you know, I just. I don't know. It's not a big deal to me. It's just something that you don't Can know. you please get a lot of voiceover work out of it, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> please don't laugh at me, please. All right, listen. I have a horrible voice, too. But what? I parlayed it into a million-dollar career. Right. So they oh, what, what is it like when you eat, James? Is it just wonderful? Excuse me. Because I have, I, have I have to be around this one when he eats, and it's like, like, a, like a jackal or something, a rhino going... Oh. Somebody, yeah. Carl's Jr. Somebody told Hell. me they, they could hear me eating across the room oh, uh, yeah. like 30 feet away. Well, I, you know, there's two things I have to do when I eat. I have to breathe through my mouth while I'm eating, and I have to talk. Right. Of course. So now, uh, we not speaking. It's like between, unthinkable. Between those two things, it's a horrible sound. But no. look, James, what's the problem? I'm okay, sorry. Uh, and so what happened anyway, uh, me, me my, we were partying, and there was a, a friend of the family, and she was, she was an older lady. She was 38, at the, I think 36 at the time. And you, were, and you were 16. That's correct. And one thing led to another. You know, we were partying. Like I said, it was kind of a free spirit. Uh, anyway, we ended up having sex, and we... You know, the party kind of went into the night, and we carried on like a relationship or like an affair for like six months. And then realizing, you know... Was she just divorced or something? No, no, she's single, been single her whole life. Huh. She, she, uh, she likes younger dudes, is what she said. And uh, she always thought I was cute and this and that. And yeah. So, anyways, that was... You know, like I said, I'm going to be 22 here in a couple Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. I'm well, going to be 40. Like 50. I'm going to be 40 by the time this calls What over. I want to know, what I want to know. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> please don't whoa, laugh at me. How come the girls I'm with now, I, I fantasize about her? I don't, I can't. Well, it, actually, being with older women at that age can be a little bit sort of 
too <laughs> arousing. Like, like it sort of etches something into yeah, your biology, and it's it's sort of a trauma in a way. She put her initials into your trunk. Yeah, and that ca- trauma becomes sexualized r- just routinely, whether or not it's a yeah. it's an a, aggressive trauma. Is that trauma? Sixteen and thirty-eight or whatever. A, a little bit. He's having a reaction to it, right? Let's put it that way. It's it's no big deal. Not going to harm him. He's not having a post-traumatic stress disorder but, or something. It just left an imprint on you. But and, maybe and, maybe he hasn't had that. Uh, experienced a woman since this time. In those since six, that time. That was the last time you were with someone? No, no, no. I've no, been no. With <laughs> no, no. Now, now he sounds no, like I the mean, Bugs Bunny. I mean, I don't so of me. <laughs> Can't do it, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go out today and you swear, you, you fly and you eat the... No, 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 no. no, no. no. All right, now, wait a second. I'm saying that maybe he hasn't been with a woman who's been as as experienced. Or as interesting to him. That may be too. too. Yeah. Maybe it's, 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 whatever it is, it's sort of a nothing. It's okay that you remember her. Okay. People people have m- memories of their, quote, first love uh, their whole life. And this may not even have been that, but it was an intense experience. Okay. Right. right. It was. It was a, all right. Yeah. Do, you, you, do you beat off to her all no, the time? No, no. Really? No, no. I have wow. a steady girlfriend. And, uh, yeah, but but <laughs> <laughs> all the more reason. <laughs> you, you don't masturbate to her? No. Only times I've masturbated is like on my girlfriend's face and thinking about her. All right. Oh, you are just. Oh, well, that's <laughs> cool. Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> don't laugh at me. <laughs> wow. Chivalry is not wow. dead. Oh, that had to be a bogus call. Really? Oh, God. Uh. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was not. Drew says no. Yeah. He was the masturbating you know on the girlfriend's face. I thought that was him her? thinking he was being funny and goofing. But if you think of the affect attached to the whole call, it was genuine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Sir, Sil- laugh at me. <laughs> Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. You know, uh, let me just say this about uh, Sarah. If you want to see her one woman show at the Cannon Theater, you can uh, call this number 310. 310- Eight five nine two eight three zero. Is it, uh, it going to be in other cities after this? No. I don't know. Maybe. This is it. Because we have other cities. <laughs> this is the last here. time she'll set foot on the stage. We're speaking to other cities tonight. I mean, well, they can come out here. All right. This is a limited run. That's I might right. bring it back to New York in the spring, but I don't know. I'm not. When you like say bring it back to New York, you just mean you go to New York, right? Well, I did it in New York. I know, but I might bring it back it, to the same theater. I know, but I'm picturing like. Uh, Packing up some semi trucks and heading, heading east. Yeah. The costumes. No, I mean, it's just great. me and that's a table and a band a, and a nice bottle of water. Oh, you got a band? Yeah, the Sarah know. Silverman's. Wow. Four piece band. Wow, I didn't know you had a band. They're a great know. band. They're actually called um, School for Burning Children. Well, now I'm really going. Leslie. Yes. You're uh, you're 16. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um. Okay, um, I have, like, this crush on, like, a guy who's, like, 22 years older than me. Mm Mm-hmm. And I know that's, like, really wrong, but I don't know how to, like, get over it because I know that it's obviously not not right. It's not wrong. It's completely natural, but it's not going to lead to anything good for you. Sarah, help her. How old is she? She's 16. The guy's 38. Who is this guy? Um, he's like my teacher. Oh, I was so in love with my history teacher. I mean, I really, it was like a joke in school, but I would cry myself to sleep at night over him. I mean, I really, it, it's real pain, what she feels. It's, it's just as much as the pain we feel, you know? It really, but seriously, if he would seriously go out with you, he's a schmuck. There so. you go. If, if he would respond, it's a very bad situation. But the fact that if he doesn't respond, it makes you even more nuts about him because he's a good guy. Exactly. But, you know. Why are we so into your teacher? I loved him so much. Why? Really? Well, how old were you? Oh, I asked Sophomore year to senior year. <gasps> wow. Ooh. Freshman year, I missed like three months of school straight. Why? From the day I missed, met him, I never missed a day of school. Why? I loved him so much, Mr. Burke. Where were you going to school? In New Hampshire. New Hampshire. We got to find this guy. Were you, uh, he killed himself. Oh, yeah. Were you, uh, were you hot when you were in high school? Yeah. Well, did I you was, look like uh, you look now? Adam, New Hampshire. I was, no, I was little, I was like, had that, or I was rounder, but I was, I was hot, but I yeah. didn't have, like, boyfriends or anything, yeah. you know, yeah. but, um, I was, like, class clowny, but I, he, he, I did, I did kiss him a couple times. <gasps> really? What? How'd that go? It was great for me, but I'm sure it didn't mean anything. I mean, he oh. had a wife, and she thought it was, like, funny. What kind of kissing? It was like this. 
Lip to lip. Oh, my God. Lip to lip. It was lip to lip. Closed mouth. How did he pull that Close off? Mouth I don't know. Right it was a private school. Close mouth. A lot went on. Yeah, yeah. yeah close mouth. <laughs> 70. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. It was closed mouth, but it lingered, Adam. No, I know. You're still, you're still feeling the effects of it today. Leslie? That's why That's yeah. why you were so screwed up. That must happen your sophomore year. Yeah, happened my sophomore year. Why? Because that's what that's what screws kids up. Oh, it? no, the kiss? No, I don't know. I think I had, like, just turned it. Right, hold on a second. Drew, shut up. She bumped the lips with this guy. Her mouth was pursed. It, it was, no. My mouth was loose, <clears throat> but closed. Okay. And it wasn't a bump. It was a linger. Sorry, baby. Leslie, I, yeah. I didn't mean to diminish your experience. Poor Sarah. Leslie. Yeah. Yeah. Was victimized. Drew, shut no, it up. Drew, He's a good guy. Once every eight shows, Drew wakes up, and it drives me insane because now <laughs> I can no longer dominate the show. <laughs> Drew, quiet down. Go back to bed over there. Don't you know this is your napping time, Grandpa? Ten to midnight every night. Remember when I wake you up, you drive home. Papa. Go ahead, Leslie. Yeah? So this guy teaches what? Um, chemistry. Chemistry? Mm-hmm. Okay, because it says up on our screen he teaches martial arts. And the Ew. fact that you went, uh, for eight seconds before you said chemistry leads us to believe it's actually yeah, martial yeah, arts. wrong. I'm sorry to say. The screen is wrong. Yeah, the screen or whatever. All right. All right. He'll be fired because of you, Leslie. I hope that's cool. No, nothing's that okay? ever happened between us. All right, you're just in love with the guy, right? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Dr. Drew, how would I get, like, if there is no, like, real answer to this question, how do I at least get closure? Well, you, you gotta kill him. You won't. You get closure by moving on, <laughs> well, that's, you know, moving out of high school, and then getting a real boyfriend. Mm. That, that's the way these things move on. Okay. How long have you been infatuated with this guy? This sophomore year. Oh, Sarah, this is your soulmate here. Oh, and you are a sophomore, aren't you? A junior? A junior, yeah. Mm -hmm, junior. You have one more year, and you'll be out of there, and it's like, it will be a blip. So what's that mean? When you Go look for back it? on it. No, no, it means this is all good. It's real pain, and it looks, but it's all just going to be a memory. Get a boyfriend your own age and, you know, do stuff with him. And or get interested and in picture your teacher. comedy. Make it sound like it's easy when it's not. All right. No, it's not easy. No, Leslie, it is not easy. It, it, actually, I hate Leslie. Uh, wait, 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 wait no, come on. No, she's, in, she's depressed. It hurts. Yeah, she's depressed. Look, all three of us have done weird stuff like this in high school. Well, uh, and, listen, I, I was in love I with Cheryl to... Ladd when I was 14. Yeah. It, it was a fantasy thing. You know? yeah, I mean, it's one thing if you it, date someone for a year and they dump you. But if I were speaking to you at 14 or 15, you would have been that depressed. No, I oh, wouldn't yes. have been. No, but you didn't. Adam, you didn't see her every day and catch whiffs of her I as she walked by. I've been work on Charlie's Angels for yeah. No, okay. <laughs> You're right. Oh. It's our no, Friday listen, night when I was babysitting. They just, just, just hang on tight. Stay focused. Stay connected to reality. Okay. Do things that are good for you that make you oh. happy, and this will pass. There, there you go. Devin? Yeah? You have 13? Yeah. What's up? Hey. Hey. I'm on the radio? That's right, you are. Oh, cool. I have a question. My um, mom, she married this guy, and his nephew, I like him, he's 14, and I want to go out with him, but I think it's wrong because he's kind of my cousin-in-law now, so. She she married a guy, so this is your stepdad. Yes. And uh, he has his, his nephew you're into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how, how close does he live to you? Um, close, mm -hmm. Okay, so well, right in the neighborhood. You could walk over to his house? I couldn't. He doesn't live in my neighborhood, and he lives, like, okay, not that close. <laughs> okay, oh, you got... Different you got, school district? Yeah. Hold on a second. Can you turn the stereo down in the background there, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold All right, on. It's, it's, turn down it's, the seals and cross. It's distracting. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so when could you see this guy? When would you see this guy? Oh, I see him every Friday. Because that's when they get together? No, because there's this dance at the Amuse Center, and I go there, and so does a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Temple Youth? Hmm? Temple Youth? Humple Youth? What? No, no, she's not Jewish. Mm. She's from Florida. So not Jewish. She's from Florida. Florida, but she's under 80, so she's not Jewish. <laughs> and her folks got divorced and remarried, so she's definitely not Jewish. They don't, they don't divorce and remarry. No, they don't. They're a good family breed. Now one's a 13-year-old involved. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, Devin, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you talk to him then in the next, uh, next dance? 
I bet he I likes you. You think he likes you? I know he likes me. Oh, you do? Yes. How do you know this? Because I talk to him every day on the phone. Aww. Oh, and he says he likes you? Yeah. Nice. Uh, what I understand what the problem is. Here. I don't. It's uh, her. She thinks they're cousins because of through marriage. Like it's fine. Cousins. Can you bring it up to your mom? Uh, no. No. Because she'd freak. Her. I think she'd freak. Okay. Eh. Why don't you go on a little date with a guy? I think it's fine. My mom had a boyfriend, Doug, the dentist, and his <laughs> son, Dougie. I fell in love with him. We became in love, and we opened a detective agency. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> when we were like ten, you know. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, you know what I mean? And yeah, we were yeah. like detectives and we were in love. Did, did he know he was in love? He, we loved each other. Did he know at 10 the way sure. you experienced it? Did he understand that? He was nuts about me, oh, Dr. Drew. Just checking. Yeah. Then they broke up and I wasn't allowed to even invite him to my birthday. So you got to think about, about that. Well, hold on. What about the agency? It broke up uh, yeah. to the dismay of the public. All right. All right. So, uh, Devin? Yeah. Well, go ahead and uh, now don't have sex with him or anything, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. I want you to wait at least three, three years. weeks. How many years? Only canoodle. Three weeks. Three no, years. I didn't say that. Three years. All right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Good times, right? Okay. What are you gonna right. do? What are you gonna do? Uh, what were your five? I was trying to tell Susan tonight what your five things were. <laughs> were. That's why I make the big bucks. For the virtual Adam? For the virtual We're going to have Adam just on tape and just have five <laughs> statements. And I decided I don't need to come in here and dispense the same crappy advice and make the same bad jokes night after night after night. <laughs> that if we just record a virtual Adam, we could answer any call yeah. in, a, in a series of these pre-recorded answers. I'm going to say something amazingly profound right now. Okay. What are the five things? Anderson. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Right. That's why I make the big bucks. Right. That's why you make the big bucks. There's a little twist. Good times. <laughs> Good times. Hey, it takes all kinds. It takes all kinds. I think I could get through 95% of the calls that come on to this show with, with that. Guys. And probably some of the celebrity interviews, too. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's take a little break here, Drew. Uh, yeah. I'll probably have to record one of those, too. Yo, well, I could handle that. Yeah, Remember, I, might, I would still be here. People might get suspicious if I don't throw it to the commercial, so. All right. All right. I don't want the program director to know I'm not actually showing up. All right. Fair enough. All right. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. Uh, yeah? One woman show, the uh, 6th through the 16th at the uh, Cannon Theater in Beverly Hills, 310-859-2830, and we'll be right back. Is this on my face? <laughs> Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. You know her from uh, Greg the Bunny and uh, Crank Yankers. Oh, man, is she great on that Crank Yankers? <laughs> Jesus' is Magic is the name of the uh, new one woman show, and that runs November 6th through the 16th at the Cannon Theater in Beverly Hills. You can uh, call information or you can call 310. 859-2830 to get those tickets. Or Ticketmaster. Or Ticketmaster. Information. Wait, well, call information, get the theater name. That's true. Yeah, get the theater number. Mass, Dr. Drew. Mm. A, a medical. What does it mean if you're, when you pee, it burns like fire? That's a urinary tract infection or a sexually transmitted disease. Oh, yeah, because my grandmother has that. Really? Mm-hmm. How nice for her. She's still active. I'm saying that, I'm thinking it's maybe it's both. Could it be both? It can be both. Mm -hmm. Or it can be a sexually induced urinary tract infection. Oh, yeah. Maybe from a real hard knocking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I could she see said if her vagina's knocking, don't come. <laughs> I got my vomit into it. <laughs> you want to be ashamed of yourself. Joe? Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Hey Adam, I just gotta know, dude. Like, okay, if you're if you're like uh, talking about strippers last night and pissed about strip clubs, then how is it that like I thought you had the juggies, man? I thought you were playing a little hide hide the paisan over there. Right, the paisan is an Italian guy. Yeah, yeah. He, I think you you want to you want to say sausage or salami, pepperoni. Well, salami. I need mean, to hide the, the, the mini meat paisan, dude. Right. Yeah, you, you know you got going. All right. Um, yeah, uh, yes. Am I having sex with all the juggies? Yes. Yes, yes, that's true. But they're not in Las Vegas, the uh, 
22 hours I'm there once every three weeks, and it's important for me to get some sex from strange women as well. So did that change after the man show? No, no. The juggies, uh, live, we get, they, we get to keep. They live with him now. Yeah, like when we stopped doing the man show, I was able to take some of the things, some of the candles from my dressing clothing, rooms and their clothing. <laughs> kept, kept some of the wardrobe, and I got three juggies, and Jimmy got three juggies, and then we threw the riders the other two. Ah, so did man show come from Boo Boo? <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, Joe? Yeah. I just got to ask Sarah, though. Hey, what audition for Saturday Night Live like? What was the audition like for Saturday Night Live? He said, what's the audition like? Yeah, I didn't hear that, but that's, that, what that, I thought that's he said. extra more interesting than anything could All possibly right, Joe, have. go ahead. What did you say? Like, for Saturday Night Live, what's an audition for that like? Oh, I heard it. Oh, nice. This is my I, You know, I heard that people have to do, like, a bunch of characters. When I did it, they uh, they saw me, like, do stand-up on, on a show. Really? And then, uh, and then they came and saw me do stand-up live, and then um, I you. met with... Pardon me? And they hired you. True, shut up. Let yeah, and then they hired me. All right. See, there you go. Thanks, <laughs> Sorry. <bro. laughs> Thank you. Well, she met with... Lauren... Lauren uh, sure, dude. Don't have to answer. You don't have to, answer. You don't have to finish the story just to relax. Do you Play know that blah, blah, Drew blah feels thing. bad. Like, Drew, you don't, you're not answering Sarah because you're rude. No. You're not a rude guy. No. You get anxious a little when people are talking because you want to help. Yes. Like you're you, projecting you, your own anxiety. You want to get in and, you, Drew wants to get in and help. Like, he looks at you telling a story as you pushing a car through an intersection <laughs> that's run out of gas. He wants to jump out and give you a hand. Yep. But his instincts are always bad, and he pushes the wrong direction. He That's gets right. in front of the car and starts shoving it back into traffic. That's, That's what right. it does to me. No, you helped. No, you he helped, helped. Dr. Drew. That was good. So who'd you meet with? L uh, Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels. I, you know what I did? He this hired is how you. I got he hired you. Right. He hired you. He hired you. <laughs> Marie? Yeah. <laughs> You're 26. Yeah. I had a question for Dr. Drew. Um, my girlfriend and I wanted to adopt a baby. But I know that it's uh, really important for their immune systems to have breast milk. And I was wondering if there was some kind of way that I could induce that. You're so lesbian. That we, yeah. yeah. She knows, Drew. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm listening. Marie. So is there a way to do that? or? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Uh, it's a really, really interesting question. How big a deal is it for the immune system and the breast milk? Well, it, it's the immune system of a of a pregnant woman. I don't know that a non-pregnant woman would create necessarily the same. But how uh, important is it for the kid? It's not that important, Marie. All right. Tons of kids are breast are fed on. But it. it's also important it's from a bonding uh, from a bonding perspective for the mother, right? It's a good thing, but it's there are other ways that people bond and attach to their kids than than just by attaching at the breast. I mean, you cannot adopt, but then there that kid is now doesn't have the parents. You're a lesbian. True, please. We understand. Because this. I have a couple friends who are, have their kids on formula, mm -hmm. and it just it doesn't seem as natural. And I don't yeah. know. I mean, Marie, it seems, Marie, it, yeah. It, it's not. But what choice do you have? You're we, adopting a you're kid. You're adopting. That's not as natural as being pregnant. That's right. Well, what if you that's adopt a kid that's five or natural, six? Natural, so to speak, natural, and the kids can grow up and be <laughs> perfectly healthy. How many kids do you hear about that are in high school that have? disease from not having been breastfed properly, which is most of the kids walking around in high school. Okay? Really? So, yeah. it's not, so most people don't breastfeed? Most people, breastfeeding is not a, is a very difficult thing to pull off. And most, Why? Mo because babies don't do it naturally, mothers don't know how to do it. They have to, you go to any, any obstetrician, any obstetrical unit in a hospital and they have breastfeeding coaches mm -hmm. to try to train women to get them to do this because it's so difficult and most women sort of do it for a little while and then they get on with the they take volunteers or you need training yeah, for that yeah, or? Yeah, you, you could try <laughs> but they, she but sounds they, like a wreck I'd like to do it but I'd like to do it like with a clipboard and a whistle and I'd like to pace up and down and, and Marie, yell at them let me talk to her alright what's Marie, wrong with her Marie, hold on what's yeah, wrong with her I want to get to her I want to get to her Marie much more significant in raising a child and attaching effectively is going to be anxiety for you. Okay, so your, it's not your anxiety, it's not that big a deal. Your anxiety and your yeah. you're being nervous and, and 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 sort of maybe even intrusive or uncertain or uh, misattuned that will have dramatic impact on the child. The most messed up people I know are the, the results of overbearing mothers, and you sound crazy. Oh, Sarah. No, Sarah, crazy no. overbearing. Yeah, we're, we're she's anxious, all crazy anxious. anxious. Yeah. I mean, no kid wants... So don't worry about it. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, how hard is it to adopt if you're a lesbian couple? 
Well, pretty hard, but I mean, it really? depends on, well, if I were to do it individually, it's not that big a deal, but trying to do it as a couple is a little more complicated, but in California, there are ways. It's just, it takes a lot of time, and people so aren't So, it'd be cool easier, so if you were a single woman, it'd be easier to adopt? That's correct. Even, even if there's no man in your life? Even if, if I'm a single mother, it's much easier to adopt than if I'm trying to adopt as a couple with two women. And, Marie, have you ever been... Which is even easier than if you're a couple of two men trying to... That's I, almost I, impossible. Do you, Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. I want to get How after. fast for this kid has an eating disorder? Well, let me... And this may not be that. Let me let One, three? Uh, He's me, hacking up strain, strain peas. Let me... Let me. And on laxative. Marie. <laughs> Marie. Marie. Yeah. If, do you have an anxiety disorder? Have you been told are you bipolar or anything? Nothing. What about anxiety disorder? All I was saying is that... Or, or listen to me. A, um, ask me a question. Or, or bipolar or anything like that. You've never had any diagnoses such as that? No. Okay. All right. Hey, but good times, though, right? So easier to adopt as a single woman than as a lesbian couple. Hmm. That's, yeah. That's do you, do you, is there a stigma? I mean, do you know this or you just sort of feel it? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've done research into it in terms of um, statistics on how many people are adopting and how they're adopting in this state. And, and, you, and you find that single female have an easier time? Yes. Wow. Even if they present themselves as a single lesbian female? Yeah. Um, generally, if you were trying to adopt as a single female, you try not to bring your sexuality into it. All right. Wow, that's interesting. All right. So uh, how are you guys, uh, go, are you, you doing okay? When can you expect to get a kid? Probably within the next eight or nine months. All right. Great. What do you get? What race do you get? It doesn't matter as long as it's healthy. That's get a Mexican. Right. Yeah. Please get a Mexican. Why? They're so... Because they're cute. I... Oh, they are. Yeah. They're cute when they're little. Now, you know where they're cute? Here's what I do when I adopt. I start with the black baby <laughs> because they're cute when they're when they're little. And then when I hit about three or four, I get rid of them, I get the Mexican. Because <laughs> the Mexicans are cute from about three to eight. <laughs> Then all hell breaks. Look, <laughs> then at about eight, I go with the white kid because it's time just to settle in. Do you, you know what I'm saying? To get serious. Yeah. Now see those Mexicans. They really love. There's nothing cuter than those little four-year-old Mexican girls because they get their ears pierced oh, really God. young, and they get those little those little peasant dresses, and you name them Maria, even if that's not their real name, and you braid their hair. So I go with the black male, zero to three. Oh, why can't they stay small? <clears throat> The blacks. God. I go black male zero to three. <laughs> then I go I go uh, female Mexican uh, three to or uh, three to seven. Then I just go for the white kid for the home stretch. Mm. No, I go Jewish kid from uh, <laughs> Jews. Although there's don't, none don't, on the market. Don't you I, give the kid the Jewish parent? Skip thirteen. No, I give. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to deal with the bar mitzvah. I cut him. I cut him. Right. I go. I go Jew seven to twelve. Then I cut the Jewish kid and in with uh, in with honky now. And I just take the white kid from that point. On. But you know what else is good? Hmm. Hmm. Black little kids, mm -hmm. and then the black really old men. That's right. They're so I, cute. I keep tabs on the black kid. When he hits 65, <laughs> I bring him back into my life. You know. And they're I'm like old there. sages. They're all wise because they're just the fact that they're alive. They're so old for their race. Right. You know? And then right. you, you can glean from them. Right. It's those middle ages. Right. Right. It's that. Uh, it's that four to uh, sixty-four that you want to stay. <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, that's our adoption plan. Who's in? Sarah? I'm in. All right. Let's take a little break. Oh. Sarah Silverman here tonight. Yes, yes, please. Doing a one-woman show. The Anti-Defamation League will be notifying both of you in the morning. We're, all, we're kidding. Yeah, we're kidding. You don't know satire when you hear it, Drew? No, I understand. Thank you for pointing that out. This is called artistic license, brother. But, but you don't know understand. It contributes. It contributes to the negative image that people have. Of yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. The lovely, lovely Sarah Silverman. Thank you. One Woman Show at the Cannon Theater, Beverly Hills, the 6th. That's uh, tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah, through the 16th. That's, uh, that's 10 days. And that's uh, going to be uh, happening... Uh, what time? What time the shows? 8 o'clock? 7 The shows are all at 8 o'clock, and on Saturday, <coughs> sorry, yeah. it's 7 and 9. 7 and 9. And yeah. uh, if you want to get tickets, the number is 310-859-2830, but uh, get on it, because uh, it was all sold out in New York, and the theater holds about three or 400 people. Sarah's got a lot more fans than three or 400 people, I'll tell you that right now. So we were just watching The Man Show, and it's your mm -hmm. Mardi Gras episode, and all these yeah. women pulling their... 
and shirts up. Mm-hmm. What does that do for women? Boatsy, boatsy. Sarah? What does it do for women? Yeah. What, what is it the... empowers them. No, I have no idea. I can't relate to it on any level. No. I mean, I, it's not like I think there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. That It's not a big deal. It's just kind of like... Drew, what planet are you from that no, you didn't I, know this? I Drew, did not know that. Drew came, oh, really? Drew came into the studio, and he was like uh, the robot from Lost in Space. He was like, <laughs> is this something they do? I had no idea women did this. When did this start at Mark D. Craw? Is this a Mark D. Craw tradition? <laughs> I'm like, they've been doing this. You know, they, they show, they give you a winger, you throw in the beads. How, oh, that's how that works? How do you think they get the beads? I, I just thought they threw beads at each other. No. We wouldn't give them beads unless they showed us something. Why else would we give them beads, Drew? I don't know. It's a quite a symbolic ritual, though. It's really interesting. Yeah, Meanwhile, you know, they're you know, beads you wouldn't want to take up space in your suitcase no. or anything. No. no. Oh, but yeah. guys wear the beads. Guys wear the beads to try to attract the, well, the, the, guy, the female the, the humans guys, to guys show them wear, their memory glands. No, the guys wear the beads, but they they just become like human mannequins. That's just a way to transport the beads until they can find a suitable girl to throw the beads at. But what do they do? Wave the bead? There's, some, there's a ritual in this? How do you, how does the girl, how do you notify a girl that you're going to... You're looking to throw beads at him. I'll usually have, like, my publicist call okay, her people <laughs> and try to arrange a bead meeting. Huh? Like, uh, middle beating. of the day, Tuesday, we'll go down to Morton's or something. I cannot believe this isn't something that just... Drew, you don't recently. know about this? No, this is going on for, for thousands of years, maybe millions, <laughs> since the invention of the bead in the breast. Since breasts were invented uh, uh, some 2,000 years ago, uh, the beads followed just, it was, it's been, it was like six months after the breast was invented, and that's when the beads for breast exchange, right after they came up that whole toy for tots thing. I yes, don't know. Sir, <laughs> why don't you give Drew a shot and then explain to him how you feel? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not, that, I was looking more for Oh, a, right. That's a good idea. Here. Yeah. You know what the worst is? <laughs> <laughs> the worst is when you get those gutter beads. What does that mean? Well, here's what happens. I'm, I, I've been to uh, Mardi Gras. Well, I was at Mardi Gras uh, a couple of years ago, and then um, then I was at the Super Bowl, which was in New Orleans uh, last year with Jimmy and, and the crew. Were they doing this for the Super Bowl, too? Uh, anytime you're in New Orleans and there's beads, there's brass. and uh-huh. Yeah, but it, Mardi Gras is a little different. But what happens is, is Bourbon Street gets packed full of humanity, and I mean packed like sardines, and it, the street gets... Wet. Funky. And it gets funkified. And it's like a little urine, a little vomit, a little <laughs> semen, oh my God. and uh, just like a pinch of pixie dust. <laughs> and about 4.35 in the morning, it's a, it's humid, uh, and, and it's wet. It's yeah. wet. And what happens is, is the beads that fall on the ground get covered in this soup of hurricane, urine, uh-huh. vomit, and pee. Yeah. And people pick these beads up uh-huh. and whip them around and throw. And if you're not looking, one will just whap you right in the face or swing around your neck, and you'll get this... Uh, you get this soup of vomit and urine around your head. Oh, I so much want to go to Mardi Gras now. Oh, my God. That, that town, it's like literally 4 or 5 in the morning, packed. Street packed. Cannot walk through it. Oh, my God. The smells that come out of that city. James? Oh, hey. Is Dom on the air? Who? James? This is me. I'm on the air? Yes, you're yes. on the air. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, first of all, yeah, you guys are great, man. Thanks. But, um, listen... Okay, my girlfriend, she's got this, when we mess around, she's got this, uh, this kind of white, kind of pretty nasty looking mushy stuff coming out. Maybe that could be her normal discharge, or it could be a yeast infection. A yeast? Well, we, we went on this. We went on the internet, yeah, it's great help, but went on the internet to try and find it, because we thought, you know, maybe it was a yeast infection, and it said there was, like, supposed to be swelling and irritation, but... Usually it's irritated when you have a yeast infection. Yeah, she said it's not irritated or anything, there's no swelling, it's oh, not that, red. That may just be her normal stuff. She produces that? Yeah. Well, she really? Didn't have it, she didn't have it before. I mean, it's just in the last two weeks, It's and it's, it's pretty nasty. Well, why don't you try some over-the-counter yeast medicine, some cream, and see like, if that clears it up. Like yeast infection stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Give that a shot. And if not, she needs to see a gynecologist. Look, she's sexually active. She's got to get pap smears regularly anyway. Cervical cancer occurs in women that have sex at a young age. There you go. So. Well, we're not having sex. It's just messing around. You're just visiting her vagina. What are you doing yeah. over there? You know, I was putting my hand in there and just messing around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does she right. wear jeans a lot? Yeah, she wears uh, tight pants, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what's, yeah, the, could... what's the meaning of that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, some girls, I mean, like, my 
older sister, the rabbi, she can't even look at a pair of jeans. She'll get a yeast infection. Oh, really? Sometimes it's that way. Really? I don't think that includes the, the normal... It doesn't breathe as well? Right. It's not as much breathing going on. Is that what it is? Yeah. Because, you know, I won't... The and oxygen the, pressure. I won't different. light a fart unless I'm wearing jeans. I know that. I mean, I, I know everyone thinks I'm kidding right now, no, but I, I won't, I know I won't you're do not. it in a pair of jammies or sweatpants. I'm afraid they're like night. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's so right. I know or the protective suck, powers of or jeans. like my friend Stu's brother's best friend, right. lit a fart, went back up inside his pole <laughs> and exploded. Interesting. He did it without any pants on. Them. <laughs> and as a doctor, you know, it's I'm a true story. You, of course it is. Aaron? Yeah. You're uh, 19 years old? What's up? What's up? All right. My girlfriend had a kid before in a previous relationship. How old is she? Um, she is 18 right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. How old's the child again? Two. Nice. And now she's pregnant with another one, or my child. And I was just wondering, can she, like, uh, Hold on a second, Aaron. Lock right. coordinates, Adam. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take out uh, the town you're in. Oh, you're calling from Riverside? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's such a dump. Why are you living there? I don't know. That's where I was born. Oh, my God. That explains a lot. Hey, Adam, how about I just move out with you? All right. Yeah, Riverside. That's true. See, see. Yeah, move in with me. Bring all the kids, and you guys can just uh, procreate in my basement until uh, until there's so until the kids actually start overflowing up into the first floor. <laughs> we'll, okay. we'll live off your Burger King food. All right. What's up? Uh, so what? Okay. What's the question? Okay. Let me. See. All right. Um, I was just wondering because she's in a like having a problem with her dad about the kid. And her dad is making her want to give up her first child and mm. like give it to her aunt because her dad thinks that we can't. <laughs> financially afford two children. All right, listen. Aaron, are you attempting to tie your shoes while you're talking on the phone or do anything like that? No. What is going on with your phone? I don't know. It's a piece of crap. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, well, how about giving this kid up for adoption? No, we want this kid. We're just. I'm just trying to see if her dad makes her give up her child, if it's going to, like, cause any mental problems for her or make her treat this child, this child differently. Is, if the dad... Makes her give up. How can the dad make her give up her two-year-old? Because her dad is trying to, like, force it on her to, like, give it to her aunt. Because uh, her aunt. All right. But she, she's, to she's, try, she's trying to do that, but she can't do it. But really, this girl's 18. You're 19. You both live in Riverside. That's child abuse right there. Oh. What, do you, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Huh? I work at a clothing department. So. Okay. So oh. you're going to be able to support two the, kids? these two kids and this woman? Yeah. Okay, how much you make an hour? Eight bucks an hour. Oh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it probably goes a long way in Riverside, right? two diapers. Because yeah, they pay you to live there, right? You wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't dare. Yeah, it's like pay. living in Mexico. It's cheap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. All right. All right, Aaron, uh, no, it's not going to be good for anybody if the child is taken away from under duress. And, uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to fast forward and see where those two youngins are going to be in 16, 17 years. Why do you guys do it? Why do we Why do we have to sabotage society this way? How come we don't get to these people? You bang a kid out at 16. I'd like to see the, the statistics on a woman who knocks out her first kid at 16 and how likely she is to have three before the age of 21. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can't get hold of these kids. I don't mean the kids. I mean the kids that are having the kids. Yeah. It's addicting to have kids when you're kids, I think. It's, it's like cats. It's, it's the only thing. Well, it's like the only thing you can do. I mean, yeah. what are your options? It, it, it's 17 when you're a woman who's come from this environment. You're not going to college. You're living in Riverside. you got daytime TV, Again, and, we and don't, that's about it. We don't take into account how much many women have a drive to have kids. The drive to be pregnant is similar to a male's drive to use his penis. I mean, it's a, there's a drive there. Yeah. And we don't, we don't take into account if there aren't other things to create meaning, well, that the, drive comes on through. Unfortunately, the dumber you are, the, the stronger the drive. Just and the there's earlier not other, there's it just not other things to integrate it with. It just, yeah. that's it. There it, it is. It, 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 goes, um, it goes undiluted. Right. You don't have to think about Unchecked. things like college and career. All you have is that biological drive. So that starts about 15, and it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. There's no Bye -bye. cookies in my box. <laughs> What's that from? That was, uh, what's her name from uh, last week, Drew? King of the Hill. Yeah. That was, uh, not busy. What the hell? <laughs> oh, oh, I 
I see. <laughs> Pamela, Pamela, Pamela. Pamela, right. Right, I was looking up on our little uh, it cheat says, sheet It says there. Voice of King of the Hill. <laughs> <laughs> voice of Bobby Hill. That's what that was. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. Sarah's doing her own uh, one-woman show, and uh, that's the Cannon Theater in Beverly Hills. Starts tomorrow, goes to the 16th. We'll, uh, you can get uh, tickets from Ticketmaster, and we'll be right mm -hmm. back. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. You know her from uh, Greg the Bunny, Saturday Night Anchor. Live, Cranky Anchors. Oh, that show's so funny. Whatever. Oh, man. <laughs> that is one hell of a show. And uh, also, uh, she uh, is going to be performing at the Cannon Theater in Beverly Hills tomorrow. And uh, going on for 10 days through the 16th. And uh, the number, 310-859-2830. Hilarious show. I read reviews on this show, Drew. Amazing. I mean, the stuff, you know, my reviews, minus four stars, minus right, three right. and a half stars. Yeah, one's your problem. Nothing. Nothing like that. This is all, like, plus half star, minus one star, all in that range. That's a 700% <laughs> oh, improvement from your e yeah. Easily. Easily. No. This stuff, I mean, what? I, I don't want to embarrass her. I don't want to repeat it, but... I was reading uh, some of these reviews that she was forcing me to read, <laughs> and, and it was like, it was like, this is important work, you know. I mean, like, like not only saying like, hey, you'll laugh, you have a good time. It's like important that you go out and see wow, this. Oh, nice. Oh, it was huge. Yeah, but you really, uh, those are all people that I was lucky enough to, you know, that came with very low expectations. But mm. if they then yeah, generate high expectations, they're just gonna go. Oh, I don't know. That's all uh, right. But it, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, but the, the, this wasn't like a Greg uh, Schimmelman from National Urban Radio or any of these uh, made up made up places. He's this, great. This is like this is uh, L.A. Times, New York Times, uh, yeah, Wall Street Journal, <laughs> New York Post, Christian Science Monitor, all the big ones. Michelle, hi. You're 16. Yeah, that's What's so up? cool. I'm actually on the radio. I just want to say, Adam, you're so cool. Like, if I was legal, I'd offer you the best oral sex in the world. Really. Yeah, really. All right. You don't have to be 18 to do oral sex, do you? Not on a quasi-celebrity. Well, you, you do, except Adam is the world's leading recipient. Yeah. He, he's an expert. Which doesn't mean I get the most, but it means my technique for receiving is unmatched. Apparently, <laughs> unsurpassed. You want to see my technique? Yes, please. All right, watch uh, this. Are you okay? You, sh 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 <laughs> Michelle, Should I stand back? this is what I'd be doing if you were here right now. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah? And go. There we go. Yeah. yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Sorry, like press. a statue. No movement. Wow. No punching. No punching to the skull. None of that. No breaking of wind. No, no number two <laughs> pencil in the ear. Nothing. Just laying back like a gentleman. Holding still. Uh, Michelle? Hey. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. My first question is, I'm 16, but I still sleep with the light on. Like, mm -hmm. not every night, but almost like every other night. Okay. It's only like, what's wrong with me? Well, why, why every other night, though? I don't know. It just depends. Like, some nights I'll get really scared or, like, after a scary movie and, like, mm. all the lights just have to be on. Well, that makes sense after a scary movie, but you're not watching a scary movie every, every other night, are you? No, no. So, what? do you have a lot of anxiety or panic attacks? That's yeah, I do. Are you, are you, do you have some sort of, are you a trauma survivor in some way? No, no. Um, Never had a trauma? Well, I almost drowned when I was a kid. All right. You were what? Almost, I almost drowned. drowned in the pool. Yeah, that's, that's something. A, that's a trauma. Anything else happen? Um, I was molested when I was five. Oh, oh, by the way. <laughs> oh, there you go. Is yeah. that in the pool, too? Or no, no, that yeah. was... Um, so we got, we, got, we got a series of traumas here, right? Yeah. yeah what, what was going on in your family at the time? Was the family kind of falling apart? Or? Uh, well, my parents are divorced, and I was four, and my right. mom was working a lot, so... All right, so, so you got, you got an abandoning mom, you got sexual abuse, you have a near-death mm -hmm. near death experience. Didn't yeah. That, no? was, it, was it one of those above-ground pools? It was a swimming pool, like, just a regular swimming pool, and, um... Like, I stepped off the stairs, and I thought there was another stair, and there wasn't, so I went deeper than I thought I would, like a couple inches, and Ooh, just sounds, went under. sounds traumatic. Well, look. <laughs> what, what? What, what the hell kind no. of drowning story is that? No, I, I thought there was going to be another stair, but there wasn't, so I went a couple inches lower than I yeah, thought. Yeah, maybe we should hear the molesting story, yeah. too, just in case. Yeah, you don't, you don't swim, that. though, right? I couldn't swim at the time, no. Okay. How old were you? I was six. All right. 
You know, let the kids walk into the pool and just keep going. They can drown in like six inches yeah. of water. All right. Um, all right, all right. So, Michelle, this may be all part of some. Yeah. Story. Who who molested you? Oh, there's a guy from my mom's church. Nice. Very nice. And what? How many times did this happen? Once, only one time. And what did he do? Everything. Like, I had one of those jumpers on, and there were like buttons on the bottom, and I couldn't button them. And I asked him to, and he told me to lay down, and like instead of buttoning them, he just unbuttoned them. And then what did he do? Just, just started doing stuff down there. Put a sand down there. Yeah, and I told my mom like once I got home, and she yeah. just, like called his parents over, and they came over, and they like yelled about it. They yelled at you? No, at him. And how old was he at the time? I think like, oh God, 15 or 16. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on yeah. there. And, and it, there, can, there can be, people can get anxiety disorders or post-traumatic stress reactions from various sources. And do, you, do you feel unsafe at home? Not really. Like, I just get really scared and I think there's something there. And I'm too old for that, though. Like, All right. Adam and I were wetting our beds when we were 16. Oh, Sarah, too? Oh, that's right. Wow. I forgot you guys shared that. Well, actually, I wet Sarah's bed, and then she... Oh, okay. It was a bed wetting you exchange her. program. You blamed her. No, no, she came wedding. over and be- wet my bed. Good times. Uh, but, so Michelle, it... it it's All really, geniuses wet their bed, Drew, don't some you know? It's about the ability to soothe oneself, the ability to deal with anxiety, to be able to have enough sort of internal resources to be able to overcome these kinds of feelings. And it's for whatever reason, whether it's specific trauma or the family's issues or lack of availability of mom, it, it all adds up to deficiency in your ability to tolerate feelings like anxiety. And you need to maybe get to work on that, do some therapy. Yeah, yeah but, but, but good times, good times. Yeah, nonetheless. Sean? Yeah. You're 24? I am. Question for Sarah? I do. Uh, Sarah, long-time fan, I have to totally tell you I love and admire your, uh, your comedic styles, the in-your-face, no pull, no pull punches. Thanks. Um, question, though, now, when you do that kind of humor, have you ever gotten any, like, really insanely just upset people about it, like the 9-11 jokes or anything like that? Because <clears throat> I've seen you on, like, yeah. on, like, Conan and Carson, and, I mean, like, the stuff, it cracks me up, but one time I, I recall you mentioning on Carson, you were on the show with Nappy Roots and led the joke about a backpack being stolen and... Everybody thought that was real. It was like me and Nappy Roots shared a dressing room and we came up with it before the show. And then I, somebody sent me a thing on the internet that they thought that I w- it was real. What but was the joke? Nappy Roots is this rap band group, mm-hmm. kind of. They're cool. So I went on first on that Carson Daly show and then I said, you know, I think Nappy Roots stole my backpack and you right. know, and I accused them of it because they're black or for whatever reasons you may infer. I, right. didn't, I didn't put it out there. <laughs> right. And then when they came out, they had, one the lead singer guy had my backpack on and then I come out and I take it and we have like a you know, a little FaceTime that was on FaceTime. That was on Carson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. I don't that know, but had? like an angry moment. Uh, and then I, I really acted it, right? Not, Did not, you see that? Not what you had. I don't watch TV, but not not with uh, no, what him. you had with your history teacher, right? That kind of FaceTime. No, <laughs> no, different. Oh, it was like yeah. a. Sean, uh, did you see it? Yeah. I did. It was hilarious. And, and then, and then, uh, but doing all this kind of oh, 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 I mean, here's you're you're very attractive female you think you can get away with a little more yeah like i can't do conan anymore because he's a pussy and he won't let me on the show because he thought i was a little bit edgy or a little bit whatever last time i did the show like three years ago so now it's like i'm banned from the show but you're cute so you get to do the show again the adorable racist is that what it is <laughs> but, she doesn't know isn't she cute she doesn't know any better i mean you get away with a I lot don't know. that's pretty good yeah, like, and, and Sarah, just for the record, sexy, sexist woman, just because of your sense of humor. Yeah. Sean, thanks. Yeah. Yep. And I'm actually trying to score tickets to your show on Saturday, but I got a, it's a work conflict, so we'll see what we can do about that. All right, let me know. Oh, Keep yeah. me posted. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> All right. Guy yelling in the audience. Okay. Adam, yeah. That would be good. I love you on the Howard Stern Show. Good times. And uh, just to drop it for Snoop, you're my main man, man, Ace. Thank you. All right, Take care. Good thanks, times. Guys. Right. What about Drew? It's all right. Ah, oh, Drew. I'm good. Sarah does get away. You do get away with a lot. Kind of jealous now. I want to think always. about what it is. Is it? Is it? I know you're, you're female. You're attractive. You're quirky. Do people think you're a little nutty and you get to you get to do what you want because of that? You think? Do you know what I mean? I you're don't know. It's hard to deconstruct that? your own thing. I mean, look at you. You get away with a lot. Yeah, but people think I'm an asshole. 
No, I don't think they do. I oh, think you're yes. wrong. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. And look, 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 all, look no all the one, people standing up to. to <laughs> nobody thinks you're a bitch. They just, they're like, oh, she's edgy, man. She's crazy. She'll say anything. It's great. You know, like, I, I don't know. Maybe that's, I, I don't want to complain. I, I don't want to sound like well, I'm I jealous. Think, you know what it is? I, I don't, I almost always say what I don't mean. I mean, I almost never really say what I mean. I pretty much say the opposite of that. And. Maybe that transcends. I mean, I don't absolutely shouldn't say that about yourself because I don't know how it's subjective. But maybe it that about that. you it's is like, that. yeah. I mean, Adam says what he really means. Yeah, it's coming when you hate a group, a people. It's from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's just silly. Right. I'm, you asked me to differentiate. Okay. I was trying to say you're and a now. I'm starting to hate you, baby. <laughs> you want to get on that list? I feel my venom. Uh, no. All right. Not all right. At no, all. I, I, it was a, it was a it was a backhanded compliment. It 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 is part of being, I guess, a, a a good performer, a good comedian, which is having people feel a certain way about you and wanting to hear what you have to say and not picking apart everything that you say and looking for excuses. It's like they're all looking right, for excuses to go. like you. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, they are. All right, shut well, up. Well, I don't know bro. anyone that doesn't like you, Adam. Oh, no. please, Sarah, hang around a little while. Rude, Rude Jesus, Conan. Conan doesn't like me. <laughs> tell them tell about the Big woman pussy. that came up to you at the Best Buy last year. Which oh, yeah. We got this calendar signing coming up this Saturday. Boy. And a year ago, this Saturday, it was at the Best Buy and uh, Bum well, well, F, wherever, <laughs> whatever the furthest. They, here, here's what they do. K-Rock K staff figures out they get a giant map of the Southland. They put a red dot where my house is, and they go... How how can we, how, what's furthest away where's, from where's Adam's there a parking house? Like a park <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's where we go, and after uh, we do the four-hour count calendar signing, which everyone hates me for because I start yelling at the Tammy Heidi who's not signing fast enough because the line is going around the block. But it's another story. But when we're done, we go into the Best Buy to get a discount, which I never end up getting. And uh, this chick walks up to me. She's 16, and she goes, "Are you as big an asshole in real life as you are on TV?" Right to my face. That's the only word she said to me. Can you believe that? That's like a third grade version of having a crush on Oh, yeah. Just, oh, like, sure. And so Adam was. said, beat it. That's beat right. it. Beat it. And to which she went berserk. No, she just ran away. Oh, I'd, I'd listen to her screaming. Robert. Robert. All right. Well, she had beat it coming. It. <laughs> so classic. <laughs> Robert, Scram. You're 29. Scram. I like that better. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. I got a question to ask y'all. Yeah. I got a girlfriend. She's 21. Mm-hmm. She's cheated on me once, and I drive over the road. She Dr cheated on me once. She told me about it. And you drive... You what? You drive over to the what? I'm a truck driver. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. She and um, I'm deadly in love with this girl. Mm-hmm. And um, I just... Is it normal for a 21-year-old to be unsure of what she wants and whether she feels like I'm the right one or not or... Uh... Well, you're, you, it's interesting the way you ask that question. It, 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 to answer your question the simplest way possible, it's unbelievable what 20-year-olds do to each other. They sort of mistreat each other. There's a lot of that going on in your 20s. Okay. 21s don't yeah. mistreat 29s as much as they mistreat other 21s. So. Yeah, but he, he's sort of... All emotionally? Yeah, so he's in her, her league there. Mm. Okay, now, 21-year-olds also are not interested in finding the one so much. Eh, they may just female be can. But may just be dating around, but and or if it is someone who is looking for the one, and he, she will not treat you like that. No, so and you aren't the one. But the one's not not driving an eighteen wheeler. Right, usually. you're either not the one, or you're just part of sort of the whole twenty one year old experience. Whatever it is is not a serious. Or, or situation. she comes from a little chaos, and yeah. she likes to act down a, a little bit. Chaos. She what? A lot of chaos. A lot of chaos. All right. All right. Well, she has a lot of chaos in her past. She will act out, and you will be the recipient of that. Any male in her life will be the recipient of the chaos. Yep. So in, the more you're in love with her and the more you try to reason with her, the more acting out you're going to get in the future. Okay. So, so this is going to be a, a tough road to hope Especially for you, at, Robert. Especially at this age. This is a sort of peak. Uh... Yeah, she, she has another five to eight years of acting out here. Your lover is the road. That's right. That's your, your mistress is the two-lane highway. Mm. That ain't no lie. That's right. Are, are you in your rig now? I definitely am. Hey, give, give, reach up and give a little toot on the air horn, would you? All right, hold on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a freight train. I love it. That, that's a real truck. 
It is a real truck. It is a Peterbilt. Nice. Do truckers take speed? No. Not this one. Not that one. All right. But a lot of them do, right? I've got I've got a natural high of the road as it is. I don't need no others. It's beautiful. beautiful. Want to see what kind it's of equipment he's got? Has he got the sandwich maker? What do you got that plugs in your cigarette lighter there? Uh, let's see, a refrigerator, oh. a power adapters, um, right. oh, what else? Phone chargers. Nice. You got in, You got any, like, hot plates or uh, coffee mugs that plug in or any of that stuff? No, just the TV VCR. Mm-hmm. How, uh, how about one of those uh, truck and vaginas? No, never bought one. Thought about it, but never did. Got to get, got to make one of those. <laughs> All right. Truck and vaginas? Something a uh, guy in a long haul could just slip over himself when he was lonely that had sort of a removable garbage bag or something <laughs> attached to it that was biodegradable that he could just... Wait, he wouldn't toss it out the window, but there would be receptacles on the highways like every every five miles. You know, like when trains would drop the bags of mail on the hook? Sure. They'd reach out, special, special extender, and would hook onto it, and then the guy from my uh -huh. company would come clean it up. And instead of a rest area sign. <laughs> right. It'd be that. Trucker's vagina. Michelle? It would be... Is uh, that Michael, by the way? Yeah, Michael. Sorry about It'd that. It'd be like male protein stop. Yeah. You're 32, buddy. Yeah, dude. What's here, up? Here, first of all, props to the 30-year-old truck driver that can hook up with a 20-year-old chick. I mean, my God. Well, 29 and 21, you're off a year well, both okay, directions. Well, okay, about 10 years off. But hey, here's my thing. My t about four calls, ago, four calls ago, you guys took a, uh, I call her a lesbian... Female yeah. who was calling about the merits of breastfeeding. Well, no, no, well, kind of, but she, she wanted was, to. She, she was worried about she it. She wanted yeah. to take well, yeah, she medication. Well, her life partner uh -oh. was going to take upon a baby. And, you know, you're worried about breastfeeding. I can understand that. And Dr. Drew, quite frankly, I'm disappointed in that you didn't expound the merits of breastfeeding. Well, in fact, you were quite like, ah, oh, breastfeeding this. Drew, breastfeeding Drew's that. not, Drew's kind of the man with the circumcisions and the <laughs> lack of breastfeeding and whatever. It, it says to me that a lot of that didn't go on in his own life. Uh, on paper, oh, really? on paper, uh, yes. breastfeeding should be um, everything you imagine it to be. It gives immunoglobulins and it creates a bonding. Also, the fact is when it's studied, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Really? Uh, it does. Well, well here, here's the thing. Michael, I, I hate to cut the doctor off, but as you know, I'm always right even when we're talking about medical well, things. Well, I'm totally with you because I believe that if you're anybody, any man that's sucking on a, t or excuse me, a, a boob, it's a great thing. Hey, Michael, the, in, in, <laughs> when you were a child, when you were an infant, and dial yes. the clock back about 15 years, breastfeeding was thought to have been a bad thing, and all children were infant formula well, fed. Well, let me tell you this. No, that, they weren't. Yeah, they were. Point, yeah, that, that's what, that was the way it was. They were pediatricians, you know, really. In what year? Let's like in, more in, likely, in the 50s. Let's 35 let's years ago. Yeah, in the 50s. Let's yeah. talk back to, say, 1970, <laughs> more than 15 years. Yeah, look, like, Drew's high. Exactly. All right, here, kids here. were out with their, lung, with their bell bottoms and, you know, smoking pot, doing that whole thing. And back then, every mother that had a baby, they were knocked out, of course. And then they didn't do breastfeeding because of I don't know why, but you had a kid, you had you did bottle feeding. That's right. And, and from then until about the 50s, and uh, right, they listen. didn't... You know, maybe that's why this country is screwed right. up right let now. Me, it's never me, measurable effect. Here's the deal. None of this stuff makes a, a huge difference. If it, you, it should. You think it would, but it apparently doesn't. Well, I think there's a need from the mother. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Go ahead. I think a lot of mothers want it. I mean, my sister has kids, and she uh, she breastfed until they were like four. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were, later, they were pushing up their glasses breastfeeding. Really? They both <laughs> got glasses when they were three. Really? Yeah, so they're like... Breastfeeding and pushing up their glasses. I'm gonna get my kid glasses when he's three, just because it's so cute. It's so cute. It's great. They look like that uh, little little kid from uh, Jerry Maguire. Right. You know? right. I have a nephew who's from Ethi adopted from Ethiopia. And by the way, it's like if you adopt, you can't breastfeed. Right. Is that so? You shouldn't adopt. Right. That's it's the point. ridiculous. And or or you know is the no nah, forget it. But okay. yesterday he told my sister that he didn't want to be brown. Uh -oh. He said, I don't want to be brown. Mm. And she was, like, panicked completely and then just said, uh, well, what color do you want to be? And he said, purple. Oh. <laughs> and she was like, oh, thank God. Uh -oh. so it's not funny, but it's cute so story. She, so she drowned him. <laughs> Brian? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. What's up? That is cute. And oh, thank yeah. God she, she said purple instead of white. So I just want to white guy. give a couple more years. Yeah. I just want to comment that the, I like it when the guests actually get into the conversation and, you know, give their opinions. And it just, it makes the show that much better. Yeah. Well, 
Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. See, here's the problem. Sometimes the guests do, and then sometimes they don't. But we just march on. We just way. roll on, yeah. 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 All right there, Brian. All right. Thanks to take my call. Hey, right, our pleasure. You keep listening, buddy. Oh, hey, definitely. I need some help right. from our callers. I'm I'm help trying to help Trojan come up with um, some informational pamphlets about their new condom for oral sex. That it's made for yeah. prostitutes. And the question, the, I need to know what kind of questions young people want to know about those things. Let me tell you what yeah. Drew's latest uh, pimp venture is. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan. What is it? Trojan. I don't know what it is yet. Has has contacted him because they're coming out with a new kind of condom, which is a flavored condom. Right. Oh yeah. And they used to have those. It's made mint. made yeah. for oral sex. And I was explaining to Drew that the only people engage in oral sex with condoms on are prostitutes. Mm -hmm. That when you're in a committed relationship or even a casual relationship, you get a BJ. You don't wear a condom. Right. That's Prostitutes are the only people that would wear this. Mm. Why do you wear a con? Why would you Be wear? Because you can get the same STDs from oral sex you can get from genital intercourse. Exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny sound effect. Yeah. And so people should be wearing condoms. This is sort of trying to get them to yeah, move. Yeah, Johns should be wearing condoms. No, but but we we're seeing stuff. Yeah, uh, no, it, it's, it happens. I'm just saying well, practically. The, 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 I, I know you'll, you'll screw around with these statistics, but the most rapidly increasing group or, or, or source of sexually transmitted disease and type of disease right now is gonorrhea of the throat in teenage females. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bad country. times. This country. It's Ecuador. How do you treat it? Penicillin. No. Right. Or, you know, not necessarily penicillin. But gonorrhea right. of the throat. Here's here's the the, the deal. So they want to they want okay. So Trojan is saying this uh, oral sex for amongst teens is on the rise. Yeah. So if you're going to perform this oral sex, and that's the disease from oral sex is on the rise. Right. This statistic came from Trojan. No. But here's the, here's the deal. The girls and the guys who participate, the 15-year-old girls and guys who participate in these sort of wine-cooler-fueled, spontaneous party oral sex are not yeah. the ones who pack condoms. I know. That's so, catch what questions would I put in a pamphlet trying to encourage young people to use them? That's my question. F frequently asked questions? Just what, what, what questions would they want answered to help motivate them? You know what I mean? What, what would you want to know about this product that would make you here's, use it? Here's the only way you could like, do why it. Why should I use it? Or I'm not a prostitute. I don't want to use it. You know, the same hey, thing. Here's how you could get, here's how you could get them to use this. Yeah. You, do, you, do, you put a bounty on condoms half filled with semen. And here's how it works. <laughs> oh my God! Well, I mean, it's certain. Like, there's certain. What, what if if the trucker vagina? Let, let me let me got sent in five instead of five cents a bottle. I'll work this out. Right. But in the certain certain parts of the country and certain parts of the world, even there's problems with certain pests. Like in uh, New Orleans, in Louisiana, they have that nutria, that giant rat chews yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do they do? A buck a head. Right. And they, people start going out and getting them. That's right. that's how they get people to get this nutria. If they say. Hey, you can kill them or not. No one would go out and kill them. You want it, people to use these condoms? Yes. You start paying a buck a head for, for proof of, of proof, proof of a of soiled, use. orally soiled condom. Hmm. You send it in. You send the teen a buck. Game on. Game on. I'm going to work out the beats of this. But you, you trade you them in for whippets. Yeah, you have to have to offer well, some incentive. Yeah, yeah. Sarah Silverman, our guest tonight. Hear her uh, tomorrow night through the uh, 16th, possibly doing a whippets joke <laughs> at, the, uh, at the Cannon Theater in Beverly Hills. I'll give you the uh, number for that when we come back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Oh, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. <laughs> Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. Sarah can be found uh, at the Cannon Theater, the uh, 6th. That's tomorrow through the 16th. Number there, 310-859-2830. And back to the phones we go. Jay's 19. Jay? Yeah. What's up? I was on the show last night trying to break up my underage girlfriend. Right. Because her parents weren't cool uh, with it. Yeah, right. But uh, I broke, so I broke up with her today. Good. She was. Yeah, uh, this was the guy with 14. the father. The father. Yeah, the, now the, her parents are calling me, trying to convince me to stay with her. I'm just, wait. Yeah. All right, listen. She's 14. Remember? Yeah. And the dad was trying to beat you up or something, as I recall. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. She's 14. You're 19. 
as much as her parents may beg you to stay together with their 14-year-old daughter, you should not do it. Why do they want you to stay with her? I don't know. Because she's happy, I guess. I don't know. All right. well, who, who could leave all that in this potential source of income? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He also could. He this could is work. a goose could, that laid the golden egg. He could work the fields. Isn't he a waiter, though? Right. Yeah. You're a waiter, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. All right there, buddy. Uh, you got to break up with her, and you got to stay broken up with her, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. You got to find a nice old 18-year-old to date. Yeah, or 35, like you guys said last night. Or 35. <laughs> That's right, buddy. 14. <laughs> too young for even you. All right. All right, buddy. You'll end up in jail, and... I thought you were on. Yes, weren't on you probation. on some kind of probation? No. Oh, that was another. Uh, oh yes, he was. It was another guy. That was house arrest. Yes. Aren't you on? Uh, he was the one with the guy that would check up on him and all, supposedly. Remember? Mm. Remember you talked about the yeah. money it would cost to have a probation officer come by and check your house. What was that probation? Not me. No, no that was a different guy. That was, there was another guy who was having sex with an underage chick, who called Arizona. And air, who called uh, last night or the night before? All right. He, he was on like a super secret probation. Yeah. Oh my God. Everybody with their 14 year old girlfriends. Stephanie? Yes. You're uh, 27? Yes. What's up? Um, is this true? Yeah. No, it's not. It's Adam. Oh, whatever. Um, okay, so I have a boyfriend I've been with for two years. And he cannot finish during intercourse. Hmm. When? Do, how does he finish? By himself. Hmm. Or if I'm doing it for him. And this is my theory, and from what I've read on the internet. You're fat. Okay. Drew, please. What, what Go that? ahead. Go ahead. Please. That was Drew calling you fat. <laughs> is that um, he's conditioned himself because before I met him, he was by himself for about two years. Mm-hmm. So he obviously was doing things for himself yeah. for quite a while. For, for two years? Yeah. He probably, he's been doing since he learned how to walk. Yeah, he's right. probably beat out the equivalent to the Caspian Sea <laughs> worth of jizz. No, and, this is and, totally true. And what he's done while in the presence of a woman could probably fill a thimble. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So he's conditioned. He's used to it. Like Adam's friend, the Wheeze, always says. Juice him up and go? No, no. Sex is a good thing. Oh, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, the wheeze says choose them up oh, and go. He's talking says, about feeding booze to women. Uh, no, Snake says uh, sex, is, uh, sex is good. It's just, you know, it's not the real thing. Right. Thank you, Drew. Good. So it's not me. No, it has nothing to do with you. So Zero. I wouldn't well, there's ways to change it. Um, yes. I don't know about zero. You get him to do his thing till he's almost there, and then he involves you. Then you, you jump on at the well, end. What am I supposed to do? Just sit there and go, okay, call me when you're ready. Well, with an attitude like that, this, this is a, no wonder he's sort of no, got a shy no, penis. That's not, no, no, trust me. It's, it's not an attitude like that. I've been extremely, extremely patient. and. Okay. what? How old is he? He's 29. And he's not had a lot of experience with women? No, he has. Is he on any medication? No. He's had a lot of experience with women? Yes. And has he said this has been a problem for because him? Because it's happened before with other people. Right. But not everyone. Hmm. Oh, that's the nice distinction to make. So you just fall into the exactly. group category. Mm, I and mean, and I know you're taking it personally. I am totally taking it Well, the way guys are... I know, and you're angry. No, I'm not angry. Yes, you're, of course. Yes. You're taking I it personally. It, and I, I want it to be good. Okay, well, look. Why don't you give him some sex and then uh, finish him off with a BJ? Will that work? Yeah, that does work. Well, so well, what the then? Big deal. Guys, you want to do it all the way. Thank you. I like to be polished off of the BJ. You know my posture for that? No, Let enough. me show you. No, let me show you right here. But it's not, not only gonna... that. Oh, that wow. Thing. Oh, that was a half-hearted <laughs> effort. <laughs> uh, listen, you can do I better I was than tired that. from having sex. Yeah. Stephanie, he's having an orgasm. But listen. That's fine. You want to feel it all the way, though. You Well, first of all, she wants to have what she can't have. Yeah, women have a thing about things happening inside them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Well, also, this is someone like That's this is a semi-serious relationship, and well, I eventually but Stephanie, want to have children. I, I understand. Too. I'm sure he. Well, you I'm, just spit in your crotch when you're done. Ew, oh awesome. my god. Oh Not my good. god. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, yeah, wait, 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 you Stephanie. can't have kids that way. I just Adam. said that for sure. <laughs> yeah, Stephanie, sure you can. Knowing you're me. <laughs> all you need is three foot of hose. 
You see what he... Oral sex then spit into the... See. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, spit into her own crotch? Yeah, she's finishing... I said spit into your crotch. She's finishing them off. one of those loony straws. She's That's good. Real. She's getting a little crazy straw. That's true. <laughs> Stephanie, look. Knowing how the way guys are... The fact that he is doing this with you is probably not a negative, but the fact that he is, in fact, even very vulnerable with you, emotionally involved, and it is intense, and that's when guys tend to get this way. Yeah, and then it feel, he'll feel worse. And Listen, it's not that he's not turned down, not oh, caring about yeah. you. It's that he's so much into that that he has difficulty and feels vulnerable, oh, sort of okay. anxious. Yeah. That makes him not work. And then Her you're, being a tremendous pain in the ass. Well, yeah, you're, you're being that, you, whether you, obviously you don't, you don't own what you're feeling, because we certainly feel it over here, which is that anger, that's another thing that makes a guy sort of... And I, I thought, and she was saying he has to finish himself off, but yeah. her polishing him off with a little oral is uh, fine. Mm. That's all, you know, it's part it's of fine it. as a treat, not as every time. Oh, yeah? What, now, let's think talk, as a well, female, fine as women. That. What difference does it make? You're not having an orgasm, he's having a... Why is that important for a woman? Well, I think... Maybe some ladies, it gives them an extra little orgasmy feeling when it is happening. Why? Nothing's changing, really. Yes, you can feel it. So why is that important? Why is that good? Seriously, because guys don't know. That's a completely alien concept. I think. Male. I mean, I don't think I'm making this up. That you, you when a man you're not is, making it up, and, it, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. This is something that women you describe. feel it like pulsing in there. But he can do that with just voluntary contractions, too. I'm not sure whether to yak or jab. I, know, I, feel, <laughs> I feel I'm a little bit disgusted. Sort of caught in between. Well, no, that, this is something women don't talk you about. You feel something. You feel something yeah, when so a man why ejaculates. Is, why is that it's important? Like, why it, it feels titillating. <laughs> what if he just did that with voluntary contractions? Because he can do you that. You know what it is? It's like, say... Hypothetically, there's a man who, even after he ejaculates, he can be hard right. and do it more. Yes. Now, that's incredible. And yet, it's less incredible than you'd think because just mentally knowing that he's probably not going to get off again. I mean, it feels good for him, but it's like he's kind of done. Even though he can do that and make you feel great. It's like there's something missing mentally when you know that he's not going, that you're not rocking his world. It takes right. away from your Let world. me talk to Drew for a second. All right, All right I'll Drew. see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, just, just hang tight for a second. So much we talk about on this show so often about how women, part of their sexuality is satisfying a man. Whereas me men don't look at satisfying the woman as part of their gratification. It's a part. Not a large part. It's a much larger part for a woman to feel like she's gratified a man. So the idea that they, she would have that release and that uh, um, that utter expression of his gratification is 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 a, a very important part. For but that. my question I, is, I why understand. does it have to be experienced with something inside the vagina? Why is it? Why is that? Well, because it's the ultimate in in intimacy. I mean, why they, they'll the, take the mouth is a, in super. Yeah. Then Drew, I, high five. <laughs> First time you ever said anything I agreed with. The, <laughs> what about the mouth? Now you're getting back in your yak or jack. No, mode. okay. That's <laughs> good too, but it's, you know, your vagina is where you yeah, feel stuff. I mean, but, but hold on. Now, uh, let me yell, yell at Drew for a yeah, second. Right, we, we talked about women and, and how instinctual they are, huh? the, the tribes, oh, but the I, we have tribes a woman they have, and, so and, the, and, and, and the, the procreation mm. drive of women. And I'm guessing that women are almost biologically set up to receive, like we talked Look. about, and not waste the seed but, and, 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 and get and gratification and, 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 from accepting the seed <laughs> and not spitting the seed into said toilet and flushing it in... To the ocean. Here's the problem. But receiving the seed. Here's the problem. We yes. finally have a woman present with us, and I want, and that's I know our belief about these differences. I'm anxious to hear if a woman actually experiences well, she it. She said that yes. Way. You I idiot. think Adam, all of Adam. I think Adam is a really vagina. good boy. He has a vagina. Just give him a. Oh, listen, uh, Drew. What no one understands about. It's on the small of his back, though. Drew, uh, Sarah, you know, smarter than Drew, right? You know that. Yeah. I think you're, yes. yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you. Well, that's why. About, so all the things you say do. about women is why they want. Yes, I know. Them. I understand that, but I. But you, when men say that, women get offended, and so no, they don't. Yeah, they do, and so to have that point made, you need to hear it from a woman. 
but she didn't make the point. Yes, her, she did. her point was, I like it. It wasn't why I like it. It was just, I like I know, it. I know. I know. All right. she, but Quite she down. doesn't have to know why. What do you got a crush on, Sarah? Drew's all pumped up there. Every time a girl comes in the studio, he's sitting up on his chair. He's all he's chatty Kathy all of a sudden. Where's comatose Drew? I'm going to my pajamas back. Chatty Kathy Griffin. Kersey? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. You're depressed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, hang on. we got to take a break. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, I want to I want to devote the proper amount of time to you and your depression, right? That's good. That's good. Uh -huh. All right, so hang tight. That's good times. All right. That's all right. me when I was 14. Yeah. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. She's, uh... Oh, she thought we were off the air, huh? And she divulged a little another piece of personal information about herself. Oh, really? Yeah. That was meant for the air. No. Well, that, okay. was, that was tamed by her standards. Yeah, no. She'll be at the Cannon Theater, Beverly Hills, the 6th through the 16th. You can uh, call Ticketmaster for information. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Sarah Silverman is our guest tonight. Jesus is Magic is the name of her uh, one-woman show, which is... Uh, Going to be uh, starting tomorrow, November 6th through the 16th, Cannon Theater, 310-859-2830. All right, let's uh, go back to the phones and uh, talk to Kersey, who we spoke to before we went to break. Kersey is 14 and depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Drew was just telling me during the commercial how depressed he was when he was a kid. Ugh, horrible. And look at him now. He's upgraded to miserable. Manic. <laughs> He's gone from depressed to manic and miserable. <laughs> Sarah's a mess, too. I'm the only one who's happy but refuses to accept it or believe it. That's called a mess. What happened? Why are you depressed, Kersey? Okay, um, like, I've just found out, like, basically I've just been attracted more to girls now. And so I'm like, bye. But my friends don't know, and I just don't know how to tell them. Tell your friends. Yeah, my friends. Hmm. They don't really do you have know. Any, do you have any close friends that you can sort of just sort of share? Sh what? Yeah, it's a girl. Right? Well, because I don't want them to feel, like, weird right. around me. Yeah, she's she's attracted to a girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't you have any good friends you can share honest feelings with? Just one person, even? Um, mm, not really. I just have a bunch of, like, friends. Like, nothing really, really close. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. well, there's something you need. Somebody you can really feel comfortable around and be well, well, vulnerable you, and do trust. You, do you think you're bisexual or lesbian or what are you? Bisexual. How do you know? I've just, like, been seeing myself looking at girls more mm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. How's the family doing? Mm, uh. That's good. Really? Uh. Mm -hmm. Parents together, treating you nice? Yeah. Everyone's happy? Yeah. Why are you so depressed? I don't know. Did you get molested? No. Nobody ever did anything bad to you? No. You never struck or hit with an object, a belt no. or anything? Huh? No. Hmm. You got old, older brothers or sisters? Yeah. Where are they, what are they doing? Oh, my brother, he's just there, and so is my little brother. How old's your older brother? He's 16. What do you mean he's just there? He's nothing, like, he's not bad or good, or he's just kind yeah. of there. Who's there? Are your parents just not around? Yeah, my parents are around a lot. Around a lot? Yeah. All right. Well, look, why don't, um, why don't you, by the way, go ahead and tell one of them you're depressed, if that's something that uh, you're dealing with. Maybe you should talk to someone about it. Number two, as far as the sexuality stuff, you're 14. You don't yeah, have to make a declaration yeah, at this point. Yeah, let settle. Relax. It's okay if you like girls, you know? Whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're good 14, times. Good but, time. uh, but here's the thing, uh, everybody. I, I remember when I was, like, 16, I was beaten off. I didn't want to tell my uh, male, well, I only want to tell, like, my, my t like 10 of my male buddies, but <laughs> that, I want the other 15 that you were jacking to find off? out. Yeah. They're the ones that made you jack off. Well, only Chris really made me jack <laughs> off. I mean, he wouldn't stand for it anymore. He'd been beating off for, like, a year and a half, and he couldn't stand the fact that I wasn't doing it, and he was right. You know? closed, him in a, closed him in a room with an electric toothbrush and said, Put this on your pogger and stand, yeah. stand back. Yeah. Step aside. Yeah. I love that electric toothbrush. <laughs> I had to be like weaned off it. He wanted it back. I punched him. I started screaming, no, you can't take it. They'll never tear us apart. 
music <laughs> swelled up. Then there's a whole montage of me running through the field of daisies with the electric toothbrush, me spinning around with I it imagine in the that field. Of course, about his father music. Playing. Yeah, us walking <laughs> on the beach, <laughs> us kidding around. Asking some life questions. It, it's smearing some toothpaste on my nose and me <laughs> laughing and giggling and falling backwards. Yeah, these weren't the Sonic Care ones. These ones, you know, vibrate. It was nice. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, yeah but uh, anyway, look. I, I, as a woman at 14, I understand you're a little hesitant to share all your intimate feelings and secrets and thoughts with your friends, and that's okay. It's all right. They don't need to know that you're thinking about women, especially if they might make fun of you or ridicule you. you just keep that close to the vest. Just feel it out. You don't have to tell everybody everything. Right. Vivian? Yes. You're 22? Yes. What's up? I got a question for you. My last three serious relationships have all been, you know, somewhat long distance. Um, the uh, the latest one, the last two have been about a year long each, and they're both from Vancouver to Seattle. Mm -hmm. And the one previous to that was about four years long from Vancouver to Victoria. Mm -hmm. So I just, like, what's going on? How come I keep finding guys oh. We care. We care. How, often, how often would you see these guys? Once a week? Yeah, every other week or so. Every other week. Do you, are you a professional? Are you, do you work a lot? S or yeah. street walker? Full time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're, so you're busy with your work the rest of the time, right? Yeah. yeah. And Where do you meet these guys? Um, through friends. And no. the second guy I met online, and then the third guy I met through friends while I was in Seattle. So. And do you, do the, are these guys also professional? Yeah. Yeah, all full time. This is, this is the way adults work, basically. Yeah. It's all right. It's fine. It, it, yeah. It's our our problem with long distance relationship is when seventeen year olds, and nineteen year olds are involved in it, and they right. have no resources and no ability to sort of. And they're they're seventeen. They're involved with forty six year old yeah, guys. Yeah, but who also are they're living in the, the relationship was built on fantasy, and there's no reality. And right. But I'm still sitting here finding myself wanting, you know, like the day to day thing, you know. Well, yeah. then you work on getting that from this relationship, or you find somebody closer. <laughs> well, I mean, if if how long have you guys been dating? A year or so. All right. Well, it's getting to the point where it's time to uh, ask or get off the Take pot. It, break it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, someone's going to have to start talking about moving at some point, right? Yeah. On yeah. the other hand, if someone does make the move, it may be over in 10 days. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I, re I really think I could stay together with someone who lived across the country, and I saw him once or, you know, a couple times a month. I could do that forever. Are you Canadian? Yes. And he's Seattle, he's a saddle, Seattleite. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Would you would you think about moving? And it's possible. I mean, uh, you know, I'd have to, I mean, to get yeah. a job thing. Oh, yeah, that Vancouver is such a pretty city. He should come up there. Well, Seattle's, Seattle's no Detroit. And you're right, but Vancouver's beautiful. Okay. All right, listen. I got one more I, 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 yeah. Um, the whole orgasm thing with women not learning to do it till a certain age, um, that's something I only figured out recently, too. Um, but I still don't do it on my own, like, just when I'm with them. Right. So, I, I don't know. What's that's another thing that women need the presence of a person to sort of activate their sexuality. Well, I also thought it was the other way around. A lot of women said that they were have found easier on their own. Some of them do, but a lot of them, no, not a lot of them, but some do. Oh. Again, the whole thing with women is that there's a tremendous range in sexual responsiveness, while men, it's sort of very, very, very narrow. Yeah. You guys are hard to profile, you broads, <laughs> with your orgasms. Right. I mean, if we had like an FBI guy who was trying to profile women's orgasms, he, he'd come up with, I got nothing. It, you there, know there's, what I'm a, there's a range, but yeah, yeah, but it's so it's it's a, it's a range. It's like it's, putting, a random it's like range. trying to put a dragnet over the entire country. You don't know you right. don't know what what city, what state the some, fugitives they, in. Some they fall out when they're walking. Some never happen. <laughs> some only do oral sex. Right, right. It, a, a guys, a guys' position. orgasm range is like this. Some guys you got to stroke their meat for two minutes, and some guys you got to stroke their meat for nine minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's there's, the difference. There's, 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 call it meat. That's the difference. That's the range. Uh, you got to slap their baloney for either thirty seconds or or five minutes. Before the orgasm comes, That's women, it. some, oh yeah, she she has an orgasm just when she works out at the gym, yeah. and then there's other ones you couldn't get it out of them with a flat bar, <laughs> and, and uh, a, a that sodium pentothal. Yeah, I, I try, I shoot them up with sodium pentothal, and then I can take a flat bar to the vagina and try What's to get. What's a flat bar? Crow bar. Like, uh, cr yeah, crow bar. Crow's foot, you know. Like, tr tr Try well, that doesn't work at all, to, Adam. Try to pry that uh, orgasm out of there. <laughs> you could work that. Come on. Do that with a man. I know you're in there. Pry them out of the way. Yeah. Did you say sometimes they fall out when they're walking? Sure. Yeah. 
You win, your broads are all over the place. That's one. It's weird how women can't get on board, can't get together on that. They can't like sync up. Yes. Why can't you guys figure that out and just come up with something so that we could be humping away and we could look at the clock and we'd be like, oops, minute 13, something should be happening here in the next 30 to 40 and seconds. The multiple versus the not multiple. Yeah, because you understand if you're with a Some woman, like anal sex you, not. you're with a woman, you know, let's say you were in a relationship where you're having a woman and she's having crazy orgasms, you know, 10 seconds after you get in her kind of thing and all that. She loves this, she loves that. Then you get hooked up with the next woman, she could be completely different. You you could pound away on her like a like a veal cutlet for 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 an hour and get nothing. That's a great story. I just want to do another meat reference. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see the wet pink stick. All right. Okay. What's well, that? That's a little Andy, Andy Dick for you. I have no idea. There what we go. Anderson's doing meat. Right there. Sarah Silverman, our guest tonight. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Well, there's your show, everybody. I want to thank Sarah Silverman for coming in here tonight. Jesus is Magic is the name of the one-woman show, Cannon Theater, starting tomorrow, going through the 16th. Thank you. 310-859-2830 in Beverly Hills. Sarah, uh, your dear, dear, dear friend. We had a, uh, yeah. We had a, we had a more dear, dear, dear. We had a dear time tonight. Dear, 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 dear. Adam and friend. Drew and I are spooning right now. That was, it was beautiful having During you During that commercial break, we got all scrubbed. Mm. And ready for bed. We washed our faces. We brushed mm. our teeth, remember? Mm -hmm. We dried our jammies by the fire so they're nice and toasty <laughs> for our tootsies. We put them in the dryer. Adam brought up the yak and jack again. <laughs> the yak and jack. There's an invention a trucker could plug into a cigarette lighter. <laughs> the yak and jack. 